uh, a of a let a of a b of uh, b i hope you guys are familiar with this notation because i remember i introduced this to you in uh, our first lecture okay i talked about this notation a of a is 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 about uh, um, the position so this is a notation we use for both the position of a vector and the points so a of little a what it means that little a there is a position vector of the point a so there's a theorem it says let a of a b of b okay be two distinct points and let c of c be a point on the line a b such that the absolute value or the length of the vector ac is to the length of the vector cb is equal to mu is to lambda okay so given this okay uh, then c the position vector of c in this equation okay is equal to this expression lambda a plus mu b Okay, lambda the position vector of the point A plus mu the position vector of the point B over the sum of the uh, scalars uh, in uh, the ratio. So C is thus provided the point C divides AB internally in the ratio mu is to lambda. And it is thus, okay, C is the C in this equation here, okay, uh, is lambda the uh, A, lambda A, that's lambda the position vector of the point A minus mu, the position vector of B divided by lambda minus mu, okay, if C divides AB externally in the ratio mu is to lambda. So for this theorem is saying here is that if C divides A B internally in the ratio mu is to lambda, such that okay, this equation holds, okay, then C, the position vector of this point C that divides the line segment A B in a ratio lambda mu is to lambda is thus. And if C divides A B externally in the ratio mu is to lambda, such that this okay equation holds, then the position vector of this point C here, okay, uh, is thus lambda A minus mu B over lambda minus mu. So we want to prove this. Okay, so uh, we start with the internal division. So here we assume that the given point, the point C, okay, divides the given line segment internally in a ratio mu is to lambda. In a ratio mu is to lambda. Now, I want to um, differentiate between internal division and external division here, even though we are considering internal division. Now, for internal division, okay, the point that divides the line segment is located okay between the two points that define the line here the point a and b okay define the line a b so c is located between a and b c is on the line okay a b that is for the internal division internal division the point that divides the line okay lies between the two points that define the line. So this is for internal division. Now, for external division, okay, the points that divide the line is located outside the line segment. For instance, if C divides this line externally, of course, I'll talk about external. I have the diagram on my next uh, uh, slide, so, uh, okay. Um, if C divides A, B externally, okay, in a ratio mu is to lambda, then we don't, we do not expect C to be between A and B, but C should be outside A and B. So C here can be on the right side of um, B, 
So in that case, we say C lies on A, B produce, okay? Lies on the extension of the, the, the line, okay? So lies on A, B produce. Or this C lies, okay, on the left side of A or above A somewhere here, okay? And there we say C lies on B, A produce. So in that case, we are talking about external division. External division. External division, you don't see the point that divides the line uh, in, between, uh, um, between the two points that define the line, but the point lies outside the given line segment. Okay, so thus here we are talking about internal division. So there's the line given. So the point that divides the line, okay, lies between the two points that define the line A and B. So C divides A, B in a ratio mu is to lambda. So the length of the vector AC is mu and the length of the vector CB is what? Is lambda. Now we take O to be the reference point of the coordinate system where the points A, B, and C, okay, are. So uh, 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 in that case, uh, we have OA to be the position vector of A, OC to be the position vector of C, and OB to be the position vector of B. I think I explained us uh, in our uh, first lecture, the position vector of a point. So uh, with this as the origin, okay, uh, we have OA to be the position vector of A. Okay, so now C divides AB, okay, in a ratio mu is to lambda internally. So this is what we have, okay, so A, B, A, C, okay, is to C, B is equal to this. Remember C divides A, B internally such that this equation, okay, involving the ratio holds. So this is equal to this implies this, okay? Another way of writing this equation involving this ratios is this, okay, involving the fractions, okay? So now we can uh, get rid of these two fractions, the fractions by just multiplying this way, we call it cross multiplication. So lambda times the absolute value of the vector AC is equal to mu times the absolute value of the vector CB. And if you do that, you have this equation here, okay? This equation, and this is a scalar equation equation uh, involving only the magnitudes or the lengths of the vectors okay so here we have the lengths of these two vectors okay equal the length of the vector ac times lambda the length of the vector cb times mu so these two okay are equal now these are lengths of vectors so if the lengths of vectors are equal, okay, it doesn't necessarily mean that the vectors, okay, uh, whose lengths are equal, okay, are equal, okay, unless the directions of the two vectors, okay, whose lengths are equal, okay, are in the same, uh, uh, are equal or are the same. If the directions are the same, then, the scalar equation, the equation involving the magnitudes will give rise to the equation involving uh, the vectors. So we say this equation here, okay, uh, which uh, is, um, uh, gives the, the, uh, the equality of the, of, of, of the, uh, the lengths of the vectors, okay, implies that uh, the, the equality implies the equality of the two vectors, okay, because the two vectors have the same direction. So uh, you may recall in our first le uh, uh, lecture, okay, under equality of vectors, I made a statement that two vectors, okay, are equal if and only if 
their magnitudes okay are the same their directions are the same okay and if two vectors are equal okay their lengths are equal but if their lengths are equal it doesn't guarantee that the vectors are equal the lengths being equal is not a sufficient condition for the vectors to be equal so the lengths plus the directions okay that will give you equality of what the vectors so here the lengths are here you cannot do this unless okay the directions are the same so here we know ac and cb okay are in the same direction so this equation implies us okay the scalar equation implies a vector equation because okay the two vectors okay here have the same direction this is very important in this proof this thing the statement when you write this you have to give reason why the scalar okay all of a sudden okay uh, tends towards a vector equation okay so from here hmm, here now we have vector equation so this is the uh um, the, the c uh the position vector of c relative to a in our last lecture the first lecture okay where we uh found the uh position vector of uh, uh, b relative to a a b the displacement vector we wrote that as uh, uh, OB minus OA or little b minus little a. So the same way here, this is the vector AC or the displacement vector AC or the position vector of C relative to A. So this is OC minus OA and that gives you this. O is a fixed point. We assume O to be the origin of the coordinate system. And then here, okay, remember lambda times that the scalar multiple of this vector so does the b relative to c so uh, the position vector b minus the position vector of c so this ob minus oc so that gives you this now at this point the question is what are we looking for we are looking for the point the position vector of the point that divides the line joining a and b in a ratio of mu is to lambda. Remember, this line is given. So the points A and B, okay, that define the line are known. So we are writing C, okay, in terms of the two known vectors and the scalars. So the scalars are also given. So they are also known. So at this point, we are looking for the vector C, the position vector of the point C. So we have to make see the subject here so we group those terms involving the vector c on one side and if you do that we have this equation here and at this point we can uh, easily write oc in terms of the portion vectors of ob and oa and that is exactly this and uh, we can use the small letters okay here so if we use the small letters then we have c to be equal to lambda a plus mu b over lambda plus mu. So this expression here, okay, is the position vector of the point C, okay, that divides the line joining A and B. A and B in a ratio mu is to lambda. In a ratio mu is to lambda. Okay, so look at this, the point C, okay, this, mm, expression here stands for the position vector of the point C that divides A, B in a ratio mu is to lambda. So let's go, let's, let's look at the diagram again. Okay. So this point C, we are saying uh, we can write the position vector of the point C in terms of the position vectors of A and B straight away without going through the process of deriving uh, this uh, point, the position vector of this point. So what we do is thus, remember here, C divides A, B in a ratio mu is to lambda. So what we do is thus, we move this lambda, okay, to A. So we swap, it's like 